today i will uh, introduce the basic concepts of uh, probability theory uh, so probability theory had its origins in the uh, games of chance in uh, early 16th and 17th century when the owners of uh, gambling houses in europe they became interested to explore that whether one can find out the probabilities of uh, various events uh, which take place during a gambling game such as uh, tossing of uh, dice uh, rolling of uh, uh, coins uh, roulette wheels etc so they contacted some of the prominent uh, mathematicians of that time say pascal and uh, fermat and uh, through the correspondence between Uh, these mathematicians the theory of uh, probability started to develop uh, one of the fundamental features of uh, this uh, probability is that the phenomena which we are interested in are random in nature so for example if you consider uh, tossing of a die uh, then we do not know whether uh, which face bearing number 1 2 3 etc will come but in the long run if we toss a enough number of times then the proportion of the number of occurrences of uh, say one of them say 6 will be 1 by 6 say then then it means that the probability or the chance of appearance of 6 is 1 by 6 similarly in the tossing of a coin we do not know that at each trial whether we will get a head or a tail but if we toss a large number of times then we know that nearly 50% of the times there will be head or 50% of the time there will be tail uh, this long term behavior is known as statistical regularity and uh, that is what encourages us to study the subject probability a similar kind of uh, observation you can make in the experiments which are connected with the real life such as experiments in physics uh, experiments in genetics or virtually any phenomena in real life consider for example uh, birth of a offspring now suppose we consider human beings then for each birth we do not know whether a, the child will be a boy or a girl but in the long run it is very well known what percentage of children will be boys and what percentage will be girls a insurance company while promoting a new policy would like to know how many of the people will survive up to the age of maturity for example if the policy matures at the age of 60 then it would like to know the percentage of the people in the target group who will be surviving beyond the age 60 and therefore may get the benefits which are due to them uh, now for individual person it is not possible to tell whether he will die at the age of 60 or not but in the whole population one can tell the percentage of people dying before 60 or dying after the age of 60 a similar kind of uh, statistical regularity is observed and it is used for weather predictions the prediction of the say growth of crop the economic growth the financial situation of a country etc uh, here what happens that in most of these cases although the things may look that they are pre ordained or pre designed but predetermined but actually there will be several conditions which regulate the uh, which regulate the uh, occurrence of the uh, final phenomena and therefore uh, one can treat them as random phenomena uh, now uh, we will uh, introduce uh, some of the basic concepts the first is experiment the term which i have used repeatedly just in the discussion so an experiment is observing something happen 
are conducting something under certain conditions which result in some outcome let me explain this uh, little wave definition uh, so consider say rainfall so now the rainfall is a consequence of several things finally we observe that there is a rainfall so there is a cloud formation there is some uh, el nino currents uh, there is a humidity there are various factors which lead to there is a rainfall or there it's cloudy or it may not rain at all it may rain in some other region now observing of this weather is a experiment similarly suppose we consider how much crop of a particular or how much yield of a particular crop say wheat is there in a particular uh, in a particular field now this is dependent upon the seeds the plot of the land where it is there the irrigation procedure and other mechanical procedures which are used for farming so the entire process although we are not conducting but it is happening and it is a random experiment the outcome is recorded as the final yield yield of the crop uh, uh, you must be very well familiar with a lot of experiments which are done uh, done in uh, physical chemical and biological sciences uh, for example uh, we have various experiments in chemistry where uh, certain chemicals are mixed and uh, they result in uh, some compound being made so broadly speaking we uh, segregate the experiment into two types of experiments one is deterministic experiment in the deterministic experiments under certain conditions if an experiment is conducted it results in a known outcome so many of the classroom experiments in physics chemistry biology etc they are like this for example if i have two molecules of hydrogen and a molecule of oxygen then we know that the outcome is a water suppose we consider say uh, a we put uh, 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 water in a vessel and heat it then the temperature reaches 100 degrees celsius and the atmospheric pressure say 700 mg then the outcome is that the water will boil so these experiments are called deterministic experiments however we are not concerned with these experiments in this subject of probability we are concerned with the experiments which are called random experiments in the random experiments although we may fix the conditions under which the uh, trials are conducted or the experiment is conducted but the outcome is still uncertain consider for example tossing of a coin so although we may fix a lot of conditions such as what kind of coin we are having uh, how to hold it when we are tossing but even then when we toss the coin and it falls the outcome is uncertain it may be head or tail or in some extreme situation we may consider that it stands on its side also consider say tossing of a die so again the conditions are similar we may Uh, fix the die in various ways but when we toss it and if it's a uh, if we are really tossing it then after falling which face will be upwards is not known suppose we consider drawing of a card 
from a deck of cards. Suppose we consider say birth of a child. Suppose we consider age at death of a person. Suppose we consider say amount of rainfall during a monsoon season in a geographical area. Suppose we want to consider yield of a crop of a certain food grain in a state. Suppose we consider the time taken to complete a 100 meter sprint by an athlete. All of these phenomena here the conditions of the experiment are fixed. For example, when we look at say the time taken to complete a 100 meter sprint by an athlete, then the conditions are fixed. For example, the ground is fixed. Uh, the starting time is fixed, the athlete is in a perfect condition, the person who will direct the race is uh, prepared, the person who will record the time is prepared. However, how much actual time the sprinter will take to complete the 100 meter race will always be uncertain. It may be 10 seconds, it may be 10.1 second, it may be 9.7 seconds, etc. Suppose we are considering say a mechanical instrument such as say life of a bulb. So, when you purchase a bulb from the market and you light it, then the it may work for 1 hour, it may work for 10 hours, it may work for 100 hours. So, although they are, uh, all these bulbs may be produced by the same company under the same conditions, even then the actual life of the bulb is not fixed, it can vary. If we look at say uh, working time of a uh, uh, say life of a mechanical instrument, say for example, a certain turbine or a certain engine. So, although they are all produced by a certain standard process, but the actual life of that instrument will not be cannot be predicted in advance. We may consider say, uh, so uh, in this cases all of these examples they relate to certain fixed conditions for the uh, conducting of the experiment. However, the final outcome is not known in advance. So, all of these are known as uh, random experiments and in the subject of probability we are concerned only with the discussion of the random experiments. So, uh, for example, uh, if we uh, why this uh, type of events are of interest? For example, you consider uh, birth of a child or age at death of a person. So, now these phenomena are extremely useful uh, in practical. Uh, for example, insurance companies when they propagate a life insurance policy, they are very much interested that what premium they have to fix. Now, how to decide about the premium? The company charges a premium and in the case of unlikely case of the person uh, dying before the age of maturity, he has to be paid uh, full uh, benefits of the policy and plus some uh, assured sum. Whereas, if the person completes the policy uh, and that means he does not succumb before the age of maturity, then he pays the premium till the uh, maturity and then he gets certain benefits which 
or not that much as much as he would have got if the person had uh, died before the age of maturity. Therefore, the company has to estimate how much premium it will be charging and how much will be actually the cost to the company in the event of the death of the person prematurely. So, the age at death of a person in the target group is to be estimated and therefore, we will record uh, we keep the records of the uh, age of the persons in that particular uh, target group for which the company is uh, trying to sell the insurance policy. Uh, if you look at the amount of rainfall then extremely important phenomena because uh, there are a lot of uh, policies of the government the policy agricultural policy the economic policies which are based on actual rainfall which is going to be there in the country. Uh, the yield of a crop uh, makes the uh, government to decide about how much food grains they are going to purchase from the farmers, how much they are going to store, what should be the uh, price which should be given to the farmers, what should be the price for the market. So, all of these events uh, the experiments although uh, they do not look random beforehand however, outcomes are not known and therefore, they are random and in the subject of probability and statistics we do study these type of phenomena. So, now let me introduce certain basic uh, terminologies of the uh, random experiments. The first of this is the concept of a sample space. So, the set of all possible outcomes of a random experiment is called a sample space. The Usual notations we will use either capital omega or capital S etcetera to denote the uh, sample space. So, let us consider some examples. Uh, suppose we are considering tossing of a coin. In the tossing of a coin, we may put the, the outcomes we may consider as head or tail and if we denote by H the occurrence of head upwards or by T the occurrence of tail, then the sample space can be described as H T. If we consider tossing of a die, then the sample space we may describe as occurrence of the face uppermost. So, the sample space will be the set of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If we are considering a drawing of a card from a deck of cards, now in a deck of cards there are 4 denominations heart, uh, club, spade and a diamond and uh, each card has a value 1 to 13. So, if we consider drawing of a card, then it will consist of the set for example, diamond 1 to diamond 13, club 1 to club 13, heart 1 to heart 13 or a spade 1 to spade 13. So, the sample space consists of 52 points. If we look at, uh, we may also observe the sample space in a way like for example, we may only record the color of the. So, in that case we may describe it differently, we may call this one as omega 1 and if I am recording only the color then it may be say black or red or we may only record the denomination that is whether it is a heart or whether it is a diamond or it is a club or it is a spade. So, the sample space will consist of only 4 points. This also shows that sample space is not a unique thing. In a given experiment, what we are interested in will decide that what is a sample space. If we are looking at the birth of a child, then it is a vague statement or you can say a vague way of describing what is a random experiment. Now, we may record whether the child is a male or a female child. We may record whether the child born has uh, is healthy or not healthy. So, we may put it as healthy or unhealthy. We may look at his uh, body weight at the birth. So, the body weight may be some number starting from say 0 to say maybe 10 pounds. It may be the total life of the child. 
so in that case this may be something like say 0 to 100 so it depends upon that what is our actual interest and we can write the sample space accordingly uh, <coughs> age at a death of a person so this may be say 0 to say maybe 120 keeping into account that there are some people who live very long where this unit of the time is years amount of a rainfall may be recorded in say centimeters yield of a crop may be recorded in some metric tons the time taken to complete a 100 meter sprint may be a time from say 9 seconds to say 11 seconds suppose i am considering an international field life of a bulb <laughs> is a number say which is 0 to infinity although theoretically speaking it is not infinity but it can be a large number life of a mechanical instrument similarly can be described suppose we are looking at the number of defective items produced by a company so a particular kind of items we are looking at suppose we are looking at certain bolts then what will happen that we will may define the defectives that if they do not conform to certain prescribed standards of measurement so now the number of defectives may be recorded in terms of percentage so the percentage can be say 0 to 100 percent or it could be say proportion in that case we may write the number as say 0 to 1 so the sample space will again be dependent upon the way we want to look at it next we define what is an event an event is any subset of the sample space now this is a very broad definition and therefore any subset of the sample space qualifies to be an event to be called an event uh, as far as the probability theory is concerned so let us look at the uh, experiments now and the examples that we have already done in the first case if we look at omega is equal to ht we may consider a subset as consisting of only h we may consider a subset consisting of say only t so the set a denotes that head has occurred the set b denotes that t has occurred so these are events we may consider say the set e in the case of tossing of a die we may write 2 4 6 this means occurrence of an even number in the birth of a child suppose we are looking at say weight at birth in pounds and suppose we say e is equal to 4 to 8 then it means that the birth weight of the child is between 4 to 8 pounds if we look at the amount of rainfall and in centimeter during a particular monsoon season and we may put say 50 to 75 that means the actual rainfall is between 50 centimeter to 75 centimeters in that geographical area during that particular monsoon season so any subset of the sample space can be considered as an event now we have various kind of events for example impossible event since every subset is a subset of every event is a subset of the sample space therefore the empty set phi that is a subset of omega therefore this will correspond to impossible event similarly we have sure event since omega itself is a subset of omega therefore this is denoting the sure event for example we may consider tossing of a die and we say that seven occurs so that will correspond to an impossible event because seven is not a subset of this and that will correspond to phi as far as this random experiment is concerned suppose i am looking at the age at death of a person and we say 1000 years then it is an impossible event 
suppose we say time taken to complete a 100 meter sprint by an athlete and we may put the time as say 5 seconds then in the present circumstances or present age this is an impossible event similarly if i put that the time taken to complete a 100 meter sprint by an athlete provided he completes the race is less than 1 minute then this will be a sure event if we look at the life of a bulb and we say it's a positive number then or a non negative number then it's a sure event so these are two uh, you can say extreme types of events which are possible however uh, there are various set theoretic operations like unions intersections differences complementation and therefore given any two events when we take their unions intersections differences complementations etc they must correspond to certain events and uh, uh, we can describe them in the form of probabilistic ex uh, explanation so for example union of two events so what does union of two events implies that if i say a and b are two events then a union b this will mean occurrence of at least one of a and b that means either a occurs or b occurs or both occur so in set theoretic representation a and b a union b means that the set of elements which are either in a or in b or in both in probability theory the event a union b will uh, indicate that at least one of a or b has occurred similarly we may consider union of a n events a1 a2 an then this will mean occurrence of at least one ai i is equal to 1 to n we may even consider an union of infinite number of events union ai i is equal to 1 to infinity this will mean occurrence of at least one ai i is equal to 1 to infinity intersection of two sets denotes the set of all those points which are common to the two sets now in set theory that is the representation in probability theory a intersection b will mean the simultaneous occurrence a and b that means both event a and b are deemed to have occurred similarly we can consider intersection of n events ai i is equal to 1 to n that is simultaneous occurrence a1 a2 an that means all of the events a1 a2 an occur and in a similar way intersection of an countable collection of events a1 a2 etc here uh, when we consider the unions or the intersections certain basic properties are there for example we may have union of ai say i is equal to 1 to n is equal to omega that means all the points of, of omega are contained in one or the other of the ais such events are called exhaustive events so if a1 union of ai is equal to omega we call a1 a2 an to be exhaustive events uh, here in place of n we may have an infinite collection of events also similarly if a intersection b is equal to 5 uh, now in the set theory this means disjoint sets in uh, probability theory a intersection b is equal to 5 denotes that the events a and b cannot occur together they are called mutually exclusive events a and b are called
mutually exclusive events. That means, happening of one of them excludes the possibility of happening of the other. Uh, we may also consider something like this that we have a collection a1, a2, etcetera of events such that a i intersection a j is equal to phi when i is not equal to j. Then we say that a1, a2, etcetera are pairwise disjoint or mutually exclusive events. Given an event A, the A complement will denote not happening of A. In a similar way, if I have event A and an event B, then A minus B will denote uh, happening of A, but not of B. This is true because this is equal to A intersection B complement. That means simultaneous occurrence of event A and B, which means that A, uh, A occurs and B does not occur. So, it is a simultaneous occurrence of A and B complement and it is translated to occurrence of A, but not occur no occurrence of B. Uh, 